So welcome back to VMware Cloud Director 101. And today's session, we're going to talk more about the, the service layer that's available to tenants in vCloud Director. It's um, gone through quite a considerable change recently um, with 9.5, I think it was introduced. Uh, extensibility, the extensibility framework, all based on, on the new uh, HTML5 framework. Uh, so there's a lot of offerings that you can provide to your tenants, which are some out of the box, some you could build your own. Uh, and there's plenty of different tiers of options for you to, to look at. So, Julian, do you mind stepping us through then from you know the high level, what is available today to a service provider for, from a, um, a service level perspective in VCD? We've talked about the, the infrastructure services that are out of the box. Let's talk yes. about the additionals now. Well, there's a lot of new add-ons. The, the product has come on leaps and bounds. So in the old days, historically, it was always very good at one thing, which was virtual machine management and resourceful abstraction. So in addition to that, we now have extensibility through the UI, thanks to HTML5. It's a nice, greatly improved interface, I think yeah. you'll agree. Yeah, totally. And as part of that, we can extend it. So as well as the all VDC views, cloud resources, et cetera, that you get in the product, you can now extend it with API, um, sorry, UI plugins. Mm -hmm. So you imagine your, your little UI here, and you've got your hamburger stack, and then you've got your various options down the side. Mm -hmm. By clicking the hamburger stack, we've got several options and this is extendable. So we have partners who develop products who can um, provide UI plugin extensions for vCloud Director. We have some ourselves. So we mentioned briefly before VROps has the tenant app. That is in fact a UI extension. Mm -hmm. So within the VCD portal, we now have a pane available to select customers which actually shows you the VROps portal within the main VCD portal. Uh, vCloud availability is another good example of that. So customers can, on a self-service basis, come into the portal and they can create their own failover policies and test failovers and so on without leaving the vCloud Director interface. So just to confirm then, when you are looking in the normal vCloud Director view, you have this, this hamburger menu in the sort of top left just by the logo. Um, clicking on that will take you navigate you to different areas of vCloud Director. So some will be this, this infrastructure view with your VCs. Yes. Then clicking on a different level will take you into whatever extensible um, solutions has been delivered. And something like vCloud Availability, which is our disaster recovery solution for um, vCloud Director, that is uh, a great example of accessibility. Um, it, is, it has different views as well, so you get to customize uh, based on the APIs that are available in, in the target product what is exposed to either the tenant or the service provider, right? You can have different views, different levels of view as well. Yes, yeah, so the thing you don't have to worry about is if suddenly you want to use these tools that you have to be some sort of API expert or developer. You don't. The whole point of these plugins is you don't have to develop yourself. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, you have purchased vCloud availability and you want to use that. You can install a plugin to extend the capabilities of VCD without developing anything. That doesn't mean, of course, you, you can't develop your own. So there is a framework, you can download it. I think we put it on GitHub. That's right, yeah. If you want to create your own UI extensions, um, you can, you're free to do that. Right, so we have, um, just to give the audience uh, an idea, at this present time, which is um, March two, 2020, we have uh, vCloud Director Availability, which is our DR solution. And there's also a data protection plugin yes. from Dell, so backup and restore. Um, and these are all, um, you know, just off the shelf. Um, you don't even have to. There's no upfront commitment with with this one here. You're creating a commitment around a tier of volume. Um, this is, I think, it's ten points per migration. Uh, sorry, per DR replicant, free from migration. It's a great way of onboarding into a VC environment for free. Um, and then, obviously, once they're in VC environment or prior to that, providing uh, protection between vCloud directors or uh, between on-prem and vCloud Director, and also Dell Data Protection, which is based on. So this is a great example because this is actually uh, Avamar and uh, Data Domain. Yes. So here you have two products that you, when you look in vCloud Director, you don't see Avamar or Data Domain. You see whatever has been exposed here in terms of I want to run a backup. Boom. Exactly. Right. What type of restore do you want to run? Boom. Very simple. Um, user friendly, uh, so you don't have to have your tenant doesn't need to be an Avmar expert. Precisely. They just can go in and, and use the solution. 
it's self-service. If you want to create a business based on VCloud Director and some of these other tools in the ecosystem and just hand them to customers from day one, you can do that. Mm -hmm. So the customer doesn't have to raise a ticket to set up a DR policy, for example, or do a test failover. It's all down to them. And of course, you can assist them if you want to as a managed service offering. Yeah, and there's different levels to this extensibility, isn't there? Because another good example of another backup product is Veeam. Um, and Veeam have extensibility with vCloud Director. Yes. But it's not the same level as Dell. So what Dell and, and we've done in vCloud Availability is we've really made it look and feel like vCloud Director. So none of the branding is pulled in from Avamore or Dell Data Main. It, it looks and feels like vCloud Director. Well, I think watch this space. What we've been doing is encouraging a lot of vendors in a wider ecosystem to create these extensions. So the advice is to service providers, if you're using a particular tool for backup or whatever it happens to be, check with them and look for vCloud Director UI extensibility support. I think you'll see more and more. Got it. Great. OK, so that's uh, one option of extensibility. What are the other options? Well, you can go as deep as you like. So that is our UI extensibility presentation in the UI. And I think we'll stick to the UI for the moment. Mm -hmm. The other side of this is orchestration and automation. So behind the scenes, you'll have various scripts and, and things that you've built. So perhaps they're based on PowerShell. Yep. And I think yep. I should start drawing its components here. I'm going to call this our script host. And we can say that as part of the, the wider infrastructure, the engineers, the administrators have created all kinds of automation to make their lives easier or even to deliver services to a customer. So I had a recent request actually for um, a service provider who want to let customers buy IP blocks mm -hmm. on a self-service basis. At the moment they have to go into another portal and raise a ticket and wait. Well, if there's automation to do that, to go into an IPAM and to get the IPs and to have a request form, and then to configure vCloud Director and NSX crucially to support that, why not put it in the portal and let customers do it themselves? So beyond UI extensibility, we have another feature called the service library. Mm -hmm. So just as customers of vCloud Director are accustomed to going into the libraries and seeing vApp templates, so images they can use to deploy virtual machines, you can now present the catalog, we call the service library, of different workflow automation. So it could be something like request a block of IP addresses. Um, now, the way it works is vCloud Director talks to our orchestration product, VRO, Virilize Orchestrator. Uh, so a workflow can be presented in the catalog and it can be executed by customers. And you, as a service provider, choose which workflows are presented and you can choose which tenants get to see them. Oh, okay, right. So execution is kicked off in the portal, in, in the UI portal. They might enter some details. I need 10 IP addresses, execute. And then VRO, so the next component in this block, goes and runs the workflow to make the request. And that could be, it doesn't necessarily have to be full automation. That might simply be generate an email based on the inputs and send it to the ticketing system. So it's the same underlying process. That is about uh, two hours worth of effort to get that working. But now the customer has the service in the portal. Um, alternatively, all of these scripts and automations that already exist, it might not even just be scripts, it could be something like um, Ansible, for example. Mm -hmm. If there's automation there, why not get VRO to call it? So just because we have uh, integration into VRO from vCloud Director doesn't mean that's the only tool you have to use. Uh, a general approach is use a reusable framework, a, a, a workflow which calls a script or some execution engine somewhere in your environment, in your infrastructure, to perform an action. Right. Um, and that's a quite common case we see. The, the advice is very quickly, as a last point on this, if it's, for if it's for sale, put it in the shop window. So if you've got these services you want to sell outside of vCloud Director and other parts of your business, Put them in there, yeah. put in a request form so the customer can see what you're selling and they can request it, even if you're not fully automating it today. So let me just, just wrap that one up then because I just make sure I understood this correctly, as I usually do. Um, so in your VCD UI, I can present what is a tile, not a script, a tile, to whatever tenants I wish to choose. That tile behind the scenes obviously runs something in, in VRO. Mm -hmm. um, it's a dynamically built tile, so it will bring back information and present it up. Maybe you're saying, go and get me uh, the next block of IP addresses. It will present that back and say, uh, you know, this is the next range that's available. It's not available. You know, what you wanted is not available again, or something else do you want? To, so you can make this flow go backwards and forwards, and each time this dynamically builds. Um, so that's one kind of really great thing. And if you've got those PowerShell scripts today, you can just literally import them into VRO, point VRO out there, import them into the tiles, 
filter out, choose, make some customizations. I mean, you could be get, you could be going within ten minutes exactly. on some of this, which is amazing. Um, and then the second thing is, you know, lots of service providers have level one operations, level two operations, and level three oper um, operations. The further down you go, the more expensive they are because they're more skilled. Um, and typically, when you're running a lot of scripts, which are doing stuff in the infrastructure, it's going to be these guys that are doing that. Um, with this, what you do is you're removing that scripting capability. You can put in error checking and everything into the script itself. So you're effectively pushing that up to an L1 job for some aspects of it. Or even, if it's something like raise a help desk ticket, mm. give that to the customer. Exactly. You know, completely get rid of this, this workflow and effort you have there. And that's one of the kind of core capabilities of how the Cloud Director can save operational costs, right? Absolutely. So take a look at your operational processes today. See if there are any quick wins for things you can automate very quickly in VRO. Anything that's in the VMware platform, be it vSphere, vCloud Director, chances are there's already an example workflow there to do it. Um, you don't necessarily have to publish workflows to customers. So your engineers can use the VCD portal as well mm -hmm. um, to go in and execute these workflows. So there are definite opportunities for saving money and making efficiencies there. Brilliant. Thanks, Jim.